Hello! Good afternoon. Hi there, and welcome to series two of Meet at the Hotel Bar. Not meet me at the hotel bar, not meet M E A T at the hotel bar, meet at the hotel bar. The amount of times I'm like, oh, I've got this really cool podcast, it's called Meet at the Hotel Bar, and they're like, oh, what, meet me at the hotel bar? I'm like, no, meet at the hotel bar. We've got this really cool podcast. <laughs> <laughs> After being tangled up in tabloid dramas, hitting the podcast charts, and unearthing some of the best kept touring stories you'll ever hear, we are back again. Again, bigger and better. Who knew that was even possible? Huss did. Well, if you're new here, we are Freddie, JC and Huss from The Band Floors, a three-piece indie pop band from London via Huddersfield. Since we started touring and travelling the globe, we realised that there are so many funny things that happen on and off stage and so many stories that never get shared with the rest of the world. They just stay in the dressing rooms and tour buses of the bands and artists you love. Until now! In this podcast, we are lifting the lid on life on the road, and where better to meet up and tell those touring tales than a place every touring musician knows well. The trusty, crusty, <laughs> rusty, busty hotel bar. All right. Nice. You covered all the bases there. We can't. We I can't don't think there's in. another Husty. We need to get on right. Husty. Though. The Husty Hotel Bar. Boom. In today's episode, we met up with a multi talented fountain of musical knowledge and living legend, Andy Burroughs from Razorlight. Due to a last minute change of schedule. Schedule. <laughs> Due to a last minute change of schedule, and we ended up recording the episode in his dressing room instead of the usual hotel bar. Don't tell anyone. Meet at the dressing room. Yeah, nice. I like that. That was totally not planned at all. That was just like off the cuff. I love that. Just really. did, yeah. I've been working on that <laughs> off the cuff. All right, Andy is best known, probably, as being the drummer for Indie Sensations Razorlight, a band who have sold upwards of four million albums, sold out arena tours, and headlined festivals across the world. The band's single, America, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that was nice. went to number one here in the UK and was actually written by Andy himself. Outside of Razorlight, Andy has also achieved success as a solo artist, soundtrack composer, actor, and was even a founding member of Ricky Gervais's infamous Foregone Conclusion. Stay tuned to hear stories of reusable wet wipes, what it's like to be in a band with David Brent, being victims of an accidental assassination attempt, that was hard to say, while returning home from a show in Russia, and how to deal with a drunk bassist who refuses to play anything other than Come As You Are by Nirvana, whilst playing the main stage at the Isle of Wight Festival. This is Andy from Razorlight coming up on Meet at the Hotel Bar. Meet at the Hotel Bar. Cool, we're off. Snazzy looking machine. It is, it's a very snazzy, it, it's actually, we don't have the, the visual aid, but the listeners will be able to hear what just happened then. <laughs> oh yeah, it's got like pre-recorded jingles in it. Oh, like fantastic. Studio so, oh my God, it's, it's unbelievably <laughs> snazzy. But it's kind of like jingle roulette. We never know what jingle it's going to We don't know which out. one we're going to oh, hit. Oh wow. I mean, and I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. so, it could be playing Andy is a wanker. <laughs> Andy is a yeah, wanker. There's a lot of work gone into the pre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the schmuck agreed. <laughs> So welcome, Andy Burrows. Thank you uh, for for joining us um, on uh, this episode. It's a um, pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah. So as as we were saying before, like this this podcast is all about like um, touring and 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 stories on the road. Um, we'll go. Let's go straight in. Let's go straight in. Jump straight in. So first question is always, what would you like to drink? <laughs> Well, what I'd like to drink is different <laughs> from what I'm able to offer you guys. I, I'd love, I'd love a cold lager. Would right. be nice because it sounds it's, lovely, you know, something like that. But unfortunately, all we've got is Burton Strong <laughs> Ale. Shout out Burton! So Shout out! We Burton. might just have water, but yeah, we'll have a sip. We need to see what it tastes. Yeah, like. let's try it. Let's yeah. try the, the yeah. Burton Burton Ale. I asked for some. Uh, Beers on my. I said local beers, please, and I guess that's. that's I, I, I've shot myself in the foot there. Yeah, we we tend to ask for local ones, but Burton Brewery. Um, so okay. there's cheers. A, there's a couple of people stepping out, but here are cheers, anybody. Cheers, 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 yeah, yeah. cheers, guys. Mm. Mm. That's actually okay, you know. That's alright. That's not right. bad. Oh, I was expecting. <laughs> there was well, an after taste. There's an afterburn there. Oh, oh, I, I noticed I've been given the, the largest. <laughs> I don't want that. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, look at the size that of yours, Jesse. Yeah. That wasn't bad. Um, mm. So, anyway, so you've played shows um, across the world over with a whole host of bands. Um, let's take it back to day one, though. Tell me about uh, what your memories from the very first tour that you ever did. The very first tour I ever did yeah. would, would have been with Razorlight um, it, in this early 2004 okay and I, I think it's fair to say it, it totally blew my mind because everything i'd done previous to that had been um you know at, at very best 
maybe a gig with 150 people um, right, okay. and mo- you know and 30 of them I knew you know what I mean so it yeah. was um, it was a real eye opener like suddenly for one being on a, a splitter bus with a tour manager all of this stuff I'd never experienced and I'd been in bands for absolutely years to, to zero success so it literally went from you know it was a, a good seven years of unsigned struggle yeah. to a band who you know I mean to be fair to raise that at the time we, we were you know it was happening yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know there were queues outside venues and stuff so my mind was fully blown for sure yeah exciting I mean we always go back to those the first ever like but you went straight into the, the splitter like so manager splitter, which obviously at this you know these days or, or, or at least where I am now all sort of like long in the tooth and cynical um, it doesn't seem quite such an exciting prospect. In fact, you know, the idea of getting on a splitter is, is not very nice, but um, it's so exciting. Yeah, 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 So exciting. You know, everybody together on a bus with a little bit of a crew. It was, it was amazing. Where did you go on that tour? It was, a, it was quite a big UK tour and Golden Touch had... Uh, <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, hey, Shaya. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Um, that is, that's Shea who plays bass for Gorillaz oh cool yeah. oh amazing he's playing on the tour with Katie with me and um, and he lives next door at the moment so. let's get on the podcast oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, episode quite two. a wonderful and ins- inspirational guy yeah, he and it's amazing it, yeah. to be in a band with him oh, cool. I feel a bit bad but let's carry on yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so from all of your days touring which city would you say is your favourite and if there what is, what is the reason for that being your favourite I think it's a, I, I guess it's probably a little bit of a cliche and it's a lot of people's favourite city but I'd have to say Paris because okay. it's where I met my it's where I met my wife I think that's we the first tour. that's amazing yeah so I think yeah I think that's um, whilst there are uh, uh, you know a lot of wonderful cities and, and here in the UK there's uh, an abundance of brilliant places to go um that will always have a yeah a massive place in my heart because of her so god the romance yeah wow. that's, that's wonderful awesome. yeah and birmingham of course where we are right now <laughs> everybody's favorite it's yeah. the uk's so we're, we're paris yeah yeah the uk's paris this is like so are we like midway through the tour that you're on at the moment or are we're you, not even midway no, no we we are there's another two and a half weeks to go we're two and a half weeks into being together but we did a week of rehearsal so and we, okay. did, we did four nights in europe and then we started in the uk on Thursday last week so it's still we're, we're getting into it yeah. but it's still yeah the first cool. third I'd say so looking back over the years of touring um, is there a certain travel day or best travel day that comes to mind uh, travel day oh my god I mean gosh, there's so many like you know the razor light ones are pretty hazy um, uh, travel day. Oh, I mean, I guess probably the most amazing travel days were probably the ones in America. I guess a lot of people have said this because yeah. you, before you start... Long drives. But yeah, before you start getting onto a plane because you just can't take the bus anymore, you, you know, you're driving, you know, through, through some incredible scenery and stuff mm. that you were told about as a as a young un. Um I remember, they, you know, I remember us driving through the Rockies or driving through, you know, I mean, just like going from east to west it's just incredible and you wake up at sort of some crazy time in the morning because you can't sleep and you get up and the sun's coming up and you're you know in the middle of the desert or something it's yeah. it's pretty amazing so i think it would have to probably hands down be america i took we took a train across from with we are scientists i remember going from uh helsinki to st petersburg um yeah. and that was pretty amazing and that was that was really interesting as well also because the train was really sort of jolly and jovial for the first half of the trip and then and then, and and then we got into the into into Russia and then it and then it just went full security and dogs for the rest of the trip it went like full oh like dear. quite oh, wow. serious yeah how how was the, the 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 gigging in Russia we've never done a gig in Russia have we we've it was good it. we've I've been there a lot I've been we did a, a bunch with Ray's Light and I did and then I did some with We Are Scientists supporting Muse and then I did some stuff there with Tom O'Dell so I've been there a fair few times I can't say it's somewhere that I'm mad keen to go back to not mm-hmm. not just because of the current yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you know but but also it's i always found it to be quite you know like going through customs and all that it just always feels a bit like they just want to scare you yeah didn't you play a show i almost played a show in russia i it got to the point where i had the visa booked um but that was kind of me depping for someone right uh for health reasons 
okay. and luckily they were they were fit enough to do the show themselves. So, so it never it, so it didn't happen. Okay. But I've got the visa stamped in, in, in your my passport. passport. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The visa. Yeah. You could have said anything there. You, you can make the rest it. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the. Um, the beauty of live gigs is is that it doesn't always go to plan. Um, things things go wrong on stage. What's what's what comes to mind is the worst thing to happen on stage. Um, the worst thing to happen on stage. Uh, we did a gig with Razorlight where our bass player had gotten so drunk that he couldn't play the bass. Okay. So we did a whole, and we were it was the second from the top billing Isle of Wight festival on the main stage. So right. we were, you know, it's pretty much we were almost headlining it. And uh, yeah, we didn't have a note of bass through the whole thing. Really? And then, and he kept playing "Come as You Are" in between the songs. So, <laughs> oh my God. so, so he could, he was capable of playing some bass. Um, That's like the, the first <laughs> riff you ever learned. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I think that he, it was such a genius bit of calculated uh, misbehaviour on his part. He, he knew what he was doing. He was. He was uh, behaving like a, a belligerent child, but it was exceptionally funny. It was really, it was quite genius. And then at the end, he got his radio mic and he, he, uh, he sort of like did a pendulum action with his arm, swaying it, and the crowd were just going, yeah, throw it, yeah. And he did it for about 10 minutes and he just lobbed this really expensive radio mic into the crowd and we walked off. And it was like, and then he, well, then, then it got worse. Then, then it got, <laughs> then, the night, no, then the night got even more dramatic, but that was quite an interesting gig to play. No bass. Wow. No bass. No bass but, in front but of But he was on stage the whole time, just wasn't yeah. playing anything. He wasn't playing any bass. <laughs> Rock and roll. They're, they're, them were the days. Yeah. <laughs> and so do you have any touring top tips, I guess, things that you could recommend to new musicians to uh, help life on the road just run that bit more smoothly? I mean, I, I guess I probably do. Whether I'm any good at taking those tips on board myself, I'm not sure. Like, it's, I think it is important to, you know, you know it's important to try and look, like look after yourself but it's not that's a lot easier said than done it's i mean I, I, we're back on tour now and immediately you slip into not being very healthy and it's um it's quite it's quite full on it's quite tough plus i'm i'm a bit older so my my view of needing to try and i don't sleep very well but you should try and get sleep you know i try you know you try and do a bit of exercise so that you're not going completely nuts but at the end of the day, most of the tours I've been on all through my life have all just been like no sleep, too much drinking, um, and just generally just come home feeling completely broken. Yeah. Uh, wet wipes, that's a good bit of advice. Okay. Take wet wipes just in case. Well, it's just a permanent on the move shower in case yep. you're waiting for the bus to. Also, the thing is for me, I get up so early. So like when the, like if the bus is outside a venue, I'm not, I can't get in. So you need it, you know. Wet wipes is just like your, your, your immediate, yeah, just get your wet wipes to give yourself a quick, uh, quick rub down. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad, we've never had that one yeah. before. I always thought wet wipes, when I was a teenager, when I used to go to festivals, I was like, wet wipes aren't really the thing anymore though, are they? They're not very, you're not supposed to. Eco oh, eco-friendly. Although, eco yeah, they're not very, eco okay, so let's just sack off wet wipes. Eco-friendly Yeah, get some, e yeah. okay, so yeah. my advice is eco-friendly wet wipes. Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah, they're no, like, yeah. made out of like bamboo fibre. Yeah. yeah. So you can flush them. Yeah. What about reusable ones? Can you. Ooh, ooh that doesn't make sense, does it? I wouldn't reuse a wet wipe. Well, yeah. It's all about the reuse, reusable nappies, am I right? Uh, <laughs> From, uh, dad well, you're gearing up to yeah, dad jokes. Yeah. Too early. The dad jokes. I think, I don't it's, think not, they, it's not even a joke. Like People, yeah, people no. do do that. Reusable nappies. Reusable nappies. Someone I'd was need to look trying to that. sell them the other day. No, it's like it's like a nappy, but you like basically wipe all the shit out and then... Put them in the wash. Put them in the wash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's for the next podcast. The, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The baby podcast. <laughs> So over the years touring, you must have had a lot of riders showing up to venues. What is the most outrageous thing you've ever put on a rider? I look, I've got to be honest. I don't think I've ever had anything to do. I was asked to do <laughs> put a nail. Yeah, <laughs> a I, I, I'm not very good at the rider requests. I mean, yeah, this this rider I've got now is ridiculous. Basically, because I didn't want to be a burden on the. I knew that this tour, was sort of, everyone's trying to work hard, and so I sort of said, oh, "I'll be all right with a bit of. I just I'll have some carrots and hummus." And if you say carrots and hummus and local beer, what, what you end up with, you realise you should have written a lot more. <laughs> we, That's all I will say. We you literally know. do the exact same yeah, thing: yeah, yeah. local yeah. beer, carrots, hummus, and pita bread. Yeah, that's usually the only. But, other but, they, but they'll they'll only ever read one half of the two words that you've given them. So there'll be some sort of bread, yeah. some <laughs> sort of beer. It'll either be something local that's got nothing to do with booze, or it'll be beer, or carrots won't be. You know, it's just it's crazy. So I went out today and sort of added to our rider. Back in the day, I don't know. I can't. I mean, when when we had when we probably had really exciting riders, I just wasn't. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't aware of what was happening anyway. So um, I don't really know. 
what we did. I know we had some. I know we had everything we ever wanted always. Mm, that's good. Uh, I remember that's, one, that's a good rider. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I literally I just had a flashback. I remember doing a festival once um, and um, going into the dressing room, and there being like the rider was just insane. It was like bottles of champagne like everywhere, mm. and like just buckets of beer. Just like the whole thing was just like just everything. And we were like, this is amazing. We just, like got stuck in, and, yeah, um, and then realized that they'd accidentally put. It was like Noel Gallagher dressing room. Like the, the signs would like put on wrong and someone ran in and they were like, oh, you're in Noel's room, get out. And we're like, oh. <laughs> I don't know why that just came into my head. Well, Champagne's yeah. all been drunk. Champagne, yeah, yeah. yeah. So sorry, Noel, if yeah. you're listening. Sorry, sorry Noel. <laughs> so um, what would be, um, what would you consider to be your career highlight? Like if, if someone was going to, if someone was going to ask you in a pub, like what's the coolest thing you've done? What would you, uh, what, would, what would you be your response? I feel really very grateful for all of the stuff that I've ended up having done or the, the opportunities that have come their way for me. So I I feel, I always feel slightly confused with how to, I mean, because for instance, I never would have dreamt in a million years that I'd write a song that would go to number one. Yeah. And I know that, that perhaps, I don't know, I don't know what the, I don't know about the importance of a number one song these days. I don't know if it's the same, but certainly, you know, even only 15 years ago, it was a big deal because that's how we'd grown yeah, up. Yeah, with yeah. The, you know, yeah. um, so I think that was always something that I thought was just that, yeah, that was just something that I couldn't quite believe that happened. I think so many things that happened. Headlining Reading Festival was is definitely a career. But then I think about like everything with Ricky Gervais and working with him on so many of the projects. I can't believe that's happened. Snowman and Snow Dog and getting nominated for a BAFTA. I don't know. I feel very lucky. I feel like um, I didn't expect. I never imagined any of this stuff would happen. To be honest with you, so I just was playing the drums in a band forever and that's what i wanted to do so yeah, yeah, yeah. so i don't know i think all of those things i just boasted about is what is <laughs> is uh are the things that i feel immensely proud of but then, but then there's loads of other, you know it's sort of the fact that i've ended up doing a bunch of albums on my own i never uh, yeah it's a terrible answer i don't I, I don't i i don't think i have one you know one that stands out as being the only thing that means the most to me because it, it all seems a bit um it all seems a bit nuts to me yeah yeah the Reading and Leeds thing, we, we were actually, well, I was at the Leeds gig. Did you get to see Res Light then? No, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did you, you went to go see Claxons on the other stage. <laughs> yeah, I don't think yeah, I was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, that's fair enough. I, I think, think we'd, I we'd gone past uh, that, but it was, it was a difficult one for us, that, because we'd spent our couple of years being cool, and then, we'd, but then we were entering into the phase of potentially going to be absolutely huge or implode. And that's where we were at, I think, when we headlined Reading. So, you know, it wasn't, it was a, it was a, it was um it was a controversial choice on the part of Reading, I think, to have us headline, as there often are. There are bands that do it, and people are like, oh, they shouldn't be headlining. They're crap. But <laughs> um, but it was incredible, you know, and it was, uh, you know, t to headline that festival is just, quite frankly, n genuinely not something I would ever have imagined in a million yeah. years I, I would have gone to done. So, yeah. That yeah. probably is out there. That's, I mean, I mean, that's that's yeah. the that's the dream. Yeah, like, we we used to go to Leeds Fest every year. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like we're from Huddersfield, so like yeah. that was always like our so like go to. Yeah, mm. and yeah, the dream. We we played last last year, twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Oh yeah, it. wicked. Um, which was a, a bucket list. Yeah, moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's you know, it's a it's a world renowned rock festival, isn't it? It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, and it holds that special place when you've been going as a kid and you watch bands yeah. and then you go oh crap I'm on yeah. stage at yeah, that yeah. festival because the lovely. chances of you lot getting to do that are pretty much zero so that's amazing yeah. that you did yeah. it I mean that's the way you got to look at it the amount of people that would w that w want to do that, what you yeah. did you know exactly yeah. that's it. and also I, we, we did a bit of looking up and um, we, we saw basically read your Wikipedia um, <laughs> and uh, saw you've, you've, you've supported a bunch of like ridiculous artists like from like Rolling Stones and mm. The Who and yeah, they, Queen that, and yeah. how, how was how were I mean shows? that was fine I mean it's just you know I uh, you know it's great it was amazing to to play alongside and meet those people but at the same time you know you just go there and don't really see anybody and you go and play and then get off and it's still a support yeah. it, it, I mean it was not. it's funny I know what you mean on the Razor like Wikipedia it always seems to feature really heavily that we supported somebody somewhere and you're like oh but what about like you know headlining yeah. I, I don't know yeah but I can't again I can't really I mean god those those years were full on hurricane you know what I mean they were like mm. um, they were bananas it just seemed like crazy stuff happened every single day every week every month every year for a good five years it was just turbo yeah yeah, mm. 
it was proper turbo. And so you spent a bit of time away from Razorlight, didn't you? Yes, and 12 so, years. Yeah. Mm. How, how did that, like, how does touring now compare to the days back then? Like, is there well, a, is very, a different Well, yeah, very different. I mean, Razorlight was, um, you know, it was really, uh, it was very, it, the, 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 the touring, it, it was, we were pampered, I think it's probably the best way of, you know, I think the relationships within the band were never wonderful. And so I think it was important that it, everything else felt great. Mm -hmm. so the hotels were always lovely the travel was always very comfortable it was you know so everything I've done post that has been part of the shit you know in there it's all been uh, travel lodges yeah. Uh, yeah so it's been a lot to get used to no I'm, I, I, I don't I don't mean that it's, I suppose what I'm trying to say is it, since Razorlight it's been very varied I've done lots of different things everything I've done on my own if I ever go and tour any of my own records we're all squished into a, a splitter and, yeah. and we're sharing rooms and we're doing that um you know, I, I spent a long time, I'd spent a few years touring with Tom O'Dell and that was wonderful. And, you know, he, he does, he does, he does very well around the world. And this tour with Katie's great, you know, but I suppose what I was trying to say is that we, we were spoilt with, with Ray's Light. You know, I think my, mm -hmm. my intro into being a professional musician was particularly um, high end. Yeah. We got off that splitter bus, you know, I was talking about that first tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got off that bit of us pronto. It was only about, um, about three months later we were, that was it. We never went back to a splitter. So, um, but I've been back to a splitter very much. So, yeah, I think it's good to go back to a splitter. We yeah. we love splitters. That's good. I think it's good to, yeah. to to to. I also do think genuinely it's very healthy to to. I feel very grateful for having gone back and gone up and down and up and down and up and down constantly because it's like it does. I know it's like a, a very predictable thing to say, but it's it's quite a grounding mm. thing because in an otherwise quite ludicrous uh, occupation yeah, yeah. I, I think it, it also reaffirms why you do it as well yeah you, of course going out every night and playing your instrument which you love doing yeah, of course yeah, yeah. So sitting on a splitter bus for three hours isn't going to stop you doing that I mean that's no, it's nice it's humbling absolutely yeah. you're, you're, you're very right very cool here's to the splitter bus yes amen and yeah amen. Cheers. Cheers. cheers cheers to all the, all the, the Mercedes <laughs> sprinters out there we love you Oh yeah. Okay, so on to uh, my personal favourite section of the podcast. This is the beef section. So you want to press a random jingle just to see the beef section. Um, so this is the section where you get to. We should air. do that. We should add. We should. We should make a little the beef sec. Beef, beef, we, beef. We'll put it in afterwards. Don't worry. Jingle. <laughs> the beef, beef, section, beef. Section, section. Um, This is the section where you get to air. Yeah. Any beef that you may have had with any artists across the world, on Twitter, backstage, in dressing rooms, on stage, mm. um, or just if there's been any interesting beef that's happened. Well, I don't think I'm. I'm. When it, I'm not particularly beefy. I'm actually. I think I've always got. I'm. Yeah, I don't really feel, feel like there's many people. I, like. I think sadly the, the most uh, the beefsome it's ever gotten is with is with Johnny in the, in. Um, in the, in the band in, in Ray's Light I don't think we've ever I don't think I've ever fallen out with anybody out you know that's good that's, that's the way to be a good yeah, trick that's, that's, so. that's a trick question basically oh is it yeah. oh okay yeah. <laughs> oh well, there yeah, we go you said anything and be like what an awful human <laughs> oh, yeah no no I don't think I have I don't think I've got I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't got any um, any meaningful beef this could be your chance to create some beef oh gosh I'm not I'm not <laughs> yeah, I'm way too diplomatic yeah, <laughs> yeah. It would be fun one. It would be fun to spend the day just being an arsehole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just get it all out. Yeah, just get it all out. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to ride on a splitter van first yeah, just to get you, really angry. Just get really mad up. and then just go for it. <laughs> let, let loose. Let loose, yeah. Get yeah. a few Burtons down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, brilliant. Okay. Well, um, this leads us nicely into the quick fire round. Um, so basically, it's... Um, the, the first thing that comes to mind. Um, so when, uh, if, if we were to say cats, you would say- Dogs. Dogs, yeah. yeah. And you can either just say one, you, you can either go with a one word answer or you can go with an explanation. A huge anecdote. Exactly, a, a huge anecdote, yeah. Um, so uh, first question number one, when we say foregone conclusion, you say- Best band in the world. <laughs> Does it have to be longer I mean, than that? I mean, you, you can't. You can no, I mean, I had full conclusion. I mean, what, you know, it's incredible. I had to be in a band with David Brent. <laughs> yeah. Iconic. You know, that's, it's just the best thing ever. Um, I couldn't believe it when that, that started to kick off. 
Um, what was my name? Andy Burford. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Andy Burford. <laughs> I remember Ricky trying to think of a like something different for for my name, and I was like, "Come on, dude, you've changed like four letters." <laughs> um, Did you do that for all of the band? Uh, Stu, my man, who's here with me tonight, he's Stu Monkford. Okay. Who's the only one who's linked to somebody in the office? I think he's like the, he's supposed to be like the nephew of Mammogram. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. I, I, I get confused, and then yeah, the other two were made up too, but. Um, it was basically my band that I had at the time my, that I was, I was going, I was on tour doing my solo act stuff right. and it was my band and then he called up and I was like, well, we'll just invert the band and I'll jump on the drums and we became Foregone Conclusion. It was so wicked. good. And was that his name, Foregone Con- Conclusion? Yeah, that, that's in, in, the, in the office when they're doing um, Free Love Freeway. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sat in the circle. Okay. I think he's talking about his band and that was, he says, oh, I used to be in a band, Foregone Conclusion. You oh, know. yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, it genuinely is the stuff of... Office legend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts, isn't it? It's bonkers. Yeah. I'm hoping we play again, actually. He, d- he did say he, wants, he said he'd like to do one more gig before he dies. So I think there's a, that, in that there must be a chance. And how, how are the gigs playing? They're awesome. They're really, really the, good. The real gigs, not, yeah, not for Yeah, the real gigs. Yeah, they're yeah. brilliant. Yeah, they're, very, they're, they're a lot of fun. I didn't it's know weird. they happened actually. That's yeah, so cool. yeah, we did. A, we did um, before the film. The film came out in 2016, and the two years before that, we spent just doing random gigs. We did a few little tours. I say tours. They're like he would only do that. Like, yeah, it'd be like three really posh dates, really lovely theatres. Uh, but they were wicked. They're brilliant. Um, he's been taught. You know, we do sometimes talk about doing like a, you know, like an afternoon slot at Glastonbury or Latitude or something. That'd, that'd be amazing. That would go down. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Like, yeah. So well, yeah. like the legend kind of, slot. Well, you need to big <laughs> it up. I mean, like, he, he just. I think he gets, he gets excited and then he get and then he. Then he pours it, cold it should water be like a, like an unannounced thing. Yeah, like he just he, comes d- on. David Brent just walks yeah. on stage. Yeah, <laughs> that would let, that would go right. Like I'm people gonna would keep, love. I'm going to keep. I'll keep trying to persuade him. When we say America, um, I'd probably probably say uh, I'd probably say raise light, wouldn't I? Probably, I guess. Uh, America, the country, is obviously is a, is a a wonderment to us all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lived there for a couple of years. I lived in New York for a couple of years. You know, it's great. But I think I think I just, if someone says American. I think they I think they've heard our song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which is an incredibly arrogant thing. <laughs> <it's weird. laughs> but I think, must be thinking I, that every day. Like America. Yeah. Was. I think it's just it's just been quite a big th- thing in my life. You know? Yeah. I don't know if I think about. I don't know what. I don't really know what I'm talking about. America is you know, the land of the free. Oh. <laughs> That's what I think when you say America. Okay, when we say. Alexander Litvinenko. Well, say. I say. Well, I know why you've. I know why you've. You've been on our Wikipedia. The Wikipedia. <laughs> you've been on Wikipedia. Coming up strong. You've been on Wikipedia. Fake news. <laughs> so we uh, we um, we went over there to play a show, and we stayed in this hotel in Moscow, and we sat we sat there for about three days, and then the show got cancelled because the, something to do with the mafia didn't want it to happen or something, and then this, then some other group of people said, "Oh, we can do it over here." Uh, the whole time we're in a sat in a gorgeous five star hotel on Red Square. I mean, just waiting to do whatever the show is. But and then so a new bunch of people. And then the police shut it down because the venue hasn't got the right something or other. So after day four, it, it we just get back on the plane and come home. Uh, but that plane had the poison. The the guys with the poison, I guess, like in a briefcase, or however they travelled with the poison. They were on the pr- the flight pre the flight before ours. So we, when we landed, we got we got whizzed to, I think I think we went to like a medical centre or something to be, to be checked. Checked over. Yeah. And was everyone okay? Everyone was. Everyone was okay. But it was quite, it was quite scary for it's a couple. Pretty of, wild. It was quite weird to <laughs> land and be like, yeah, it was it was nuts actually. It was cra- it was. And also quite, I'm sure it would have been quite worrying at the yeah, time. Well, so you didn't yeah, yeah. Know was, like what level of. Yeah, it's like oh maybe we just maybe we're about to die. Yeah. Yeah. Which would have been a, an abrupt end to. a <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty yeah, 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 yeah. And then go with the golden tour. Oh, yeah, <laughs> on stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so when we say Johnny Burrell, you say, um, I think it's, I can some, be a one-word answer. Can um, we can also beep and edit things out as well? I think that. he's. Um, uh, all sorts of things go through uh, my head. incredible. <laughs> this is why it's incredible. Good to have a visual. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. Um, I mean, he's one of the he's one of the last rock and roll frontmen. That's for sure. He's he's old. He's old school. I mean, he's an incredible performer and frontman and singer and all of those things. 
you know, personally, when someone says Johnny Braille, all sorts of things go on in my head. We've had a very um, intense and complicated time together. So yeah, yeah my, 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 when someone says his name, it, my, I get a slight, um, you know, twitch, twitch. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I also, you know, but I also got, I got endless respect for the guy as well. Um, so, and we're playing together and writing together again these days to, to a point. So it's, um, God, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough to know what to say. I don't know. I try and be honest no. about it. Really, we, we've got a complicated relationship. He's he's uh, he's he's wonderful. He's great. He's a he's a he's a superstar. But he's a he's um he's complicated. <laughs> That's great. That's a good yeah, yeah good roundup of the answer. Yep. Um, when we say Mercury Records, I guess uh, that was our. That was our record label. So I guess, yeah, Mercury Records, again, a little bit like with America, which is completely arrogant and ridiculous because loads of people have been signed to Mercury Records, but immediately flashes up is like Rich O'Donovan, our A&R guy, and, uh, you know, I don't know, offices somewhere in Kensington and being like wined and dined for a few years thinking you're the the dog's bollocks and the next big thing. Mercury Records, that's what makes me think of. Makes me, it makes me think of uh, some very heady days, exciting times. It was, um, you know, we as bands we dream for I mean you guys have got a record deal but you know I dreamt for all my teenage years about wouldn't it be amazing to have a record deal um, and so Mercury was our Mercury was our uh, you know life changing life changing label home, life -changing -changing. Label home yeah, yeah okay so finally when we say Andy Burroughs you say oh god <laughs> um, <laughs> we're getting deep what do we say I don't know like massive tangled mess of a human being um uh, Andy Burroughs I don't know what, do I, what, what, what does anybody else say what does anyone else say about themselves do it's they say things confidently about themselves it's, it's, it always catches people off guard yeah, they're not, they're not ready for it I, um, I'm still confused mm -hmm. by everything uh, in the world as we all are but also in my tiny corner of the world I'm trying to figure out what the hell has ha what, what happened I was bumbling along trying to make it as a drummer in a band and then it all happened and ever since then I've been I'm, I'm confused you know what I mean I feel like that w I thought that would I thought that happening would mean I'm like oh oh right yeah. I was right I know what's going on and yeah. it's all, all it's done is made me more confused so mm -hmm. I'm more confused than ever but I'm starting to think maybe I, that's how I want to be mm -hmm. a constant state of confusion confusion's good sometimes sometimes if you've got you know if you know everything it's it's, it's know, boring yeah if it's too straightforward I don't want that, don't want that boring exactly. shit exactly yeah. you yeah. want to be in the maze not on the straight and narrow 100% there you, go. That's a tattoo. there you go that's the tattoo yeah is it that's my next tattoo yeah. oh that's your next yeah the maze yeah I want to be in the maze you heard it here first everyone we're in the maze uh, brilliant well that, that rounds up everything if you um, do you have anything else that you want to you want to add um, for the uh, people listening any coming up any, any, any well this tour is happening with, with Katie at the moment and Shea who you just who you just saw and uh, and then and then it's a week off and then we go straight into the Razor Light tour which I'm really excited about and then uh, some festivals and then I've got a bunch of other stuff going on but it's, it's always a bit um, it's always a bit scary to talk about things that might yeah. be happening yeah. because it's like you just don't want to jinx anything I mean I'm even going to do that and who knows that's probably not even wood yeah I don't think it is <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah yeah it's you know it's all still going, so it's great. Yeah. Um, I feel, uh, uh, again, I feel very lucky. Good luck to you lads, that's what I say. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank good you luck to the band. Much. Good luck thank for you. everything with you lot. Nice one. Well, um, thank you for, 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 being, for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, thank, you for, um, thank you for having me. We'll see you um, at well, Glastonbury. We're, we're mates now. So yeah. We'll, see, yeah, we'll see you at Glastonbury before conclusion. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. 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 We'll do a warm-up gig and you come support. Okay, that deal. sounds perfect. Yeah. We'll just make first. sure we bring yeah. the Burton Ale. Yeah, yeah. We need we'll the Burton Ale. That's all the rider will be. That's yeah. all I need. Yeah, that and a, a, pot, hummus. That and a pot of hummus. <laughs> yeah, no and carrots. Wet, and wet wipes. <laughs> and wet wipes. Bamboo wet wipes. I'll tell you what, if you've got those four things in life, you're sorted. Yeah. <laughs> and have a great show tonight and a yeah. great yeah, tour. Yeah, have a great Thank show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Nice awesome. one. Thank you. All right. A huge thanks to Andy for being part of the podcast and to the makeshift dressing room hotel bar in Birmingham Symphony Hall. We couldn't do this podcast without you guys listening, so a huge thanks to you for being part of the Floors family. And if you do like what you hear, then let us know, because there's nothing better than getting a little DM or message saying how much you enjoyed a certain story or how our sultry tones help bring to life an otherwise or long... Or our coldy tones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. 
how our bunged up tones help bring to life an otherwise long and boring morning commute for you. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe anywhere and everywhere you can. It's all about the algorithm. You can find us most places at Meet at the Hotel Bar or meetatthehotelbar.com. It really does make such a difference for us. We're an independent podcast and trying to climb those big bad podcast charts is hard enough. We need you. Join us next time when we'll be chatting to Alice Merton. You can expect stories of nightmare flights to Prague, what it's like to start your own record label, how to remove a tick from your behind, and why margarine is a non-negotiable on a rider. Only on 